3D games made nowadays look like this. Sorry, bad traffic. One combat job compliment. But 3D games made 25 years ago look like this. Freeze! Who are you? Hold your fire! I'm a human! We've come a long way from Laura Croft's 45 degree angle boobs. When people think of early 3D games, they usually think of Metal Gear Solid or Final Fantasy VII or Super Mario 64, but the third dimension has a far longer history than that. The easiest place to start this video about the history of 3D games is with the first 3D video game, but to be honest, I don't really know what that is. The reason for this uncertainty is because it's hard to determine what exactly makes a game 3D. Look at 1993's Super Mario Kart. This game has three dimensions, width, height, and depth, but this game doesn't use any 3D polygons. The 3D effect is done by making the character sprites bigger and smaller depending on their distance from the camera. The racetrack is a 2D image skewed to give the illusion of depth. But what is the difference between the illusion of depth and actual depth? At the end of the day, every video game is 2D because they're all played on a flat screen. All depth in video games is just an optical illusion. This conversation can get really technical and really philosophical, so it's kind of up to personal interpretation as to what is the first 3D game. Maybe it's 1983's Cube Quest, which combined real-time 3D polygons with Laserdisc animated backgrounds. Maybe it's 1980's Battlezone with its 3D camera turning. Or maybe it's 1973's Maze with its 3D vector graphics. You can see how iffy it can be finding the first 3D game, but I think that one of the earliest games that just about everyone can agree is 3D is 1984's iRobot, an arcade shooter developed by Atari. This game uses real-time 3D polygons. There were no pre-rendered 3D images like Sonic 3D Blast or Donkey Kong Country, where the 3D images are 3D models converted into 2D sprites. The fact that this game came out before Dragon Quest, Zelda, and the original Super Mario Brothers is absurd. It just goes to show you how ahead of their time arcade graphics were in the 80s and 90s. Home consoles and PCs just could not compete. This game has smooth camera movement and angle changes along with some really trippy looking graphics that are still cool to look at today. One of the next 3D games that I think was a huge step forward in terms of 3D visuals is 1987's Zarch, a spaceship shooter developed by David Braben and originally released on the Acorn Archimedes PC. This game's use of lighting was very impressive for the time. Tiles that were closer to the screen were brighter and farther away tiles were darker. Obviously, you can't see much of the game's world at once thanks to the horrible draw distance this game has. Objects that are five feet or more away from you just disappear. But even besides that, the way that the ground has different levels of depth to simulate hills and valleys is great. And I haven't even mentioned how great the particle effects in this game are. It's still really satisfying to see ships explode in this game. The late 80s were when we really started to see leaps forward in terms of 3D visuals, and it's thanks to racing games. 1988's Winning Run developed by Namco and 1989's Hard Driving developed by Atari were released only two months apart, and both games showcased some impressive graphics. They featured terrain with curves and slopes, tons of polygons on screen, fairly decent draw distance, and some solid car physics. Oh, and I absolutely love Hard Driving's instant replay feature. With the end of the 80s and the start of the 90s, I I think this is when game developers really started to see 3D as the present instead of as the future. 1990 had Alpha Waves, 1991 had Catacomb 3D, and then 1992 was a blowout year. We got Sega's Virtual Racing for the arcades, which had a feature to allow the player to change the camera angle, something that would become a mainstay of the genre. We also got landmark releases for the PC, like the codifier of the first person shooter genre, id Software's Wolfenstein 3D. 1992 also gave us perhaps the most important game in the creation of the survival horror genre, Infogrames' is Alone in the Dark. 3D games were not just limited to top-of-the-line arcade cabinets anymore. You could play them at home, too. Heck, you could play them on the go, because the Game Boy even got a 3D game with Nintendo and Argonaut Games' first-person space shooter, X. The next year, though, 1993, is perhaps the biggest year in the history of 3D gaming. We got another id Software PC game in... Doom, the game which expanded upon the formula of Wolfenstein 3D and took the FPS genre to new heights. 
we also got Star Fox for the Super Nintendo, a rail shooter game that Argonaut and Nintendo made which expanded upon their previous work on X, bringing 3D polygons to your living room. Namco asserted their dominance in the racing genre with Ridge Racer, but easily the most influential game that came out this year was Sega's iconic fighting game, Virtua Fighter. These character models were incredibly advanced for the time, not to mention the realistic animations. Obviously by today's standards, these 3D models look chunky as heck, but keep in mind, this is what 3D models looked like the year before Virtua Fighter came out. They barely resembled real humans. By comparison, Virtua Fighter's models have far more lifelike proportions. Then there's also the fantastic dynamic camera, the lighting on the characters changing based on the stage, and even the complex real-time shadows on the ground. Virtua Fighter not only revolutionized fighting games, but the entire gaming industry. The following year, 1994, saw a huge explosion of 3D games, from Tekken to Daytona USA to System Shock. 1994 would also be the release of the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation, home consoles with an emphasis on 3D games. 1995 gave us iconic 3D light gun shooters in Virtua Cop 2 and Time Crisis, as well as some other hits like Twisted Metal, Rave Racer, and Soul Edge. And of course, 1996 was the year we got some of the most important video games of the fifth generation of game consoles. Quake, Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil, Tomb Raider, and of course, Super Mario 64. This was the year when I think 3D games really took over the game industry. This was the year that the world knew that the age of sprites was over and that the age of polygons had begun. Interestingly, with this explosion of 3D gaming, we ended up getting a few games that began to experiment with different visual styles. At the tail end of 1996, we got one of the pioneers of the rhythm game genre, Parappa the Rapper, developed by Nana On Sha. While tons of games were trying to stray away from 2D and go 3D, Parappa the Rapper combined the two with its paper-thin character models. These flat 2D cartoon characters operating in a 3D environment gave the game its own unique visual identity. The PlayStation simply wasn't powerful enough to render very complex 3D environments, so one of the neat tricks game developers like Square used for Final Fantasy VII were pre-rendered 3D backgrounds. The same way games like Mortal Kombat and Donkey Kong Country turned 3D models into 2D pictures for sprites, Final Fantasy VII did the same thing with the backgrounds. This wasn't a new thing by any means, Alone in the Dark did it all the way back in 1992, but Final Fantasy VII is probably the most popular game that used this technique. 1997 also gave us Sonic R, which was remarkable for its time due to the way it handled draw distance. Instead of having objects just pop in when they got close to the player, the scenery would actually fade in. The PC version of the game that was released a year later in 1998 even had weather effects like rain and snow. 3D gaming would evolve even further into the early 2000s as video game graphics continued to get more complex and more realistic. Water physics, complex lighting, accurate lip syncing, realistic faces, motion capture, all of these things started to become commonplace. The sixth generation of consoles is when I think 3D graphics really started to look good. There is an appeal to old school low poly 3D, but those games always require you to suspend your disbelief and use your imagination a bit. But some of the stuff from the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox generation legitimately looks great. It was during this time that I think we fully made the leap from early 3D to modern 3D, something that would be expanded upon in the following console generations. Obviously, I didn't talk about every notable 3D game that came out during this era, that would make this video take way too long and I think I covered a fairly decent amount already. The birth of 3D video games was quite an interesting journey, and as graphics continued to get more and more advanced every single year, I'm really excited to see what the future of visuals in video games looks like.